I'm Rafael from Nepata and I love listening to you today FM. My name is Ken Gerdla and I'm from Australia but I'm part region from Rotraki and I love listening to today FM Rocks. For the best music and less talk, we tune in to Today FM in Nasilai Village. Today FM Rocks. My name is Inaya Ali and I'm from Ba and I love the big breakfast on Today FM. I just love it and hope you love it too. My name is Jay from La Pasa. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM Rocks. My name is Naushin and I'm from Sambeto and I love Today FM. Today FM Rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. Tonight, Fiji marks 46 years of independence. Taxman to go after companies withholding VAT payments and women of all ages vulnerable to sexual violence. Fijians came together all over the country to celebrate Fiji Day, 46 years of independence and self-determination. Celebrations were held all over Fiji, including the Albert Park in Suva, with the large crowd turning up to witness the formalities. Rachel Knapp has more. A moment of pride for every Fijian as the Republic of Fiji military forces began formal celebrations with a march through the streets of Suva. Albert Park Way, it all happened on October 10, 1970, Fiji declared an independent state, free from colonial rule. A 21-gun salute and Fiji looked back at the struggles, the success and the journey that brought us to this point. It's a really special day for us as it's uh, independence for Fiji and uh, coming all the way from Kira Island, we feel very special to be to be part. It means a lot to us as uh, being a, a citizen of Fiji, so we are proud of our nation. Uh, it's a privilege to be part of the occasion since it's once in every year. It uh, shows or uh, it signifies the main uh, history. We are all here as a family, as a nation, and uh, coming to experience a very unique event uh, here at Albert Park. It means a lot to me since uh, it's my first time to celebrate here in Suva. Albert Park was filled with seas of blue as people witnessed the military ceremony. The royal salute was a true moment of honor for all those Fijians who dedicated their lives towards defending Fiji. To be part of the occasion is like being a Fijian, so I'm proud to be. It's an important uh, day for us uh, children. I come from China to visit the Fiji celebration. It's an independent day I heard uh, to in Fiji, so I'm just coming uh, really it's pretty good. And I'm coming from Singapore. Yeah, I go Fiji day, enjoy myself and just see how many people there I see all blue, 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 I'm very happy. The significance of Fiji Day isn't lost on anyone. Some of those here today may have been present when the flag of independent Fiji was raised at the very spot in 1970. Celebrations were also held at Lambasa, Levuka, Ba, Singatoka, Savasavu, Ra, Bua, Natambua and the Yasawa Islands. Rachel Nath, FBC News. The Nandi Centre for Special Education today hosted Fiji Day celebrations. Minister for Forestry Semi Kore Lavasa was on hand to mark our independence. Rahit Dale with the story. <laughs> A special celebration with special citizens and Minister Semi Korei Lavasau highlighted the need for equality as we look back on 46 years of independence. Our banner of Fiji Blue is being waved in every corner of the country as we celebrate 46 years that Fiji has stood as an independent nation. He adds the days of racial discrimination are behind us and it's time to get together and celebrate as one. Unity. Uh, this has been the lands of our forefathers, but now we are sharing equally between all the different races that have called Fiji their home. We are all Fijians. Thank you. Nandi Center for Special Education head teacher Shiromani Philip says having these students included in celebrations means a lot. 
It's very exciting for all of us here in the Nandi Special School. We are very happy that the celebration was supposed to be on Friday so that all our children could participate. But unfortunately, we had the funeral and the celebration had to be moved to Saturday. But still, we have a lot of children participating. Similar celebrations were held throughout the country today. Rohit Deo, FBC News. The Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority still finds issues with voluntary compliance by taxpayers. Chief Executive Viswanath Das says value-added tax or VAT is an area of concern because they continue to find businesses withholding VAT payments. Kelly Vavala reports. Value-added tax is the largest form of revenue for the Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority. But not everyone is doing their part to help generate income for state expenses. We definitely have uh, uh, concerns over voluntary compliance. I think uh, we all understand that uh, VAT is definitely one hot topic uh, that we must, uh, you know, we should discuss. And you know, the fact that you know the tax office has taken a voluntary compliance approach, that we are providing all the information to our taxpayers, and we expect voluntary compliance. Hundreds of thousands of dollars is estimated to be lost to state coffers because businesses decide to pocket the money. Das says consumers who ultimately pay VAT can hold these unethical dealers accountable. Consumers, they play a very important role as well. You know, when they go out shopping, you know, uh, you must understand that, you know, it is your right to ask for receipts. You ensure that you also assist by asking for receipts because that way businesses have to report on the um, sales. And uh, ultimately, you know, because you know, the consumers are paying the taxes, so that ensures that the taxes gets to the government. Das says VAT and all other taxes are used to fund initiatives like free education programs, medical services and many other facilities the government is trying to provide for all Fijians. Kelly Vathala, FBC News. Medical Services Pacific, an NGO that provides support to victims of sexual violence, says women of all ages are vulnerable. In the last four years, it has helped women and children with access to reproductive health care, as well as emotional support and counselling. Shireen Shivan reports. Perpetrators of sexual violence don't care how old the victim is. Medical Services Pacific Director Jennifer Poole says they are alarmed that the youngest sexual assault victim this year was only one year nine months old. About four cases a week and around 17, we're averaging around 17 a month at the moment and most of the clients are under 18. However, sexual deviants have also attacked elderly women. One victim was 74 years old. Perpetrators, they have that in mind to, you know, to, to assault women or to to take away their right and because they are so powerful and they can just do whatever they want to do to, to women and girls. Minister for Women Marisaini Buniwanga says such acts show that there's a lack of respect for women in this country. It's a wake-up call for parents, for, um, for every Fijian basically, to teach the young teach our children about the basics of uh, uh, the rights of human beings, of respect for human life. Just last month alone, the Director of Public Prosecution charged 14 people for sexual offences in 25 separate incidents. There were nine victims of serious sexual offences under the age of 18 years. Sharin Shivan, FBC News. Still to come on FBC News, work begins on new Stinson Parade Bridge. An education ministry seeks assistance from India to source handheld electronic devices. Stay with us.
Welcome back. This is FBC News. The Olstenson Parade Bridge in Suva will soon become a no-go zone. Fiji Roads Authority Chief Executive John Hutchinson says Chinese contractors are currently installing a fence to restrict public access to and around the building. Ali Kimbia has more. The Fiji Roads Authority has confirmed people who use this area for market stalls and minibus operations will have to move as work on the new Stinson Bridge will start soon. That fence is designed to protect the public um, from the works that will be going on. Clearly there will be heavy machinery, cranes, uh, that sort of thing operating in and around that area. It's a very congested area. The bridge has been closed for five years now with the site used as a makeshift trading area. That's something that we're working through with the Suva City Council uh, at the moment. But um, progressively over the next week or so, you'll probably see that fence uh, take shape fully and uh, access to the Stinson Bridge will basically be no longer available to the public. Contractors are expected to deliver the new Stinson Parade Bridge in late 2017. The authority will also act as a liaison with the Chinese government and other government agencies. Ali Kibia, FBC News. The Education Ministry has sought assistance from the Indian government to help in the digital literacy program. It is understood the ministry has requested for over 20,000 handheld mobile electronic devices or tablets. Rachel Nath reports. Education Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy says they are making progress with the government's digital literacy program. We are exploring a number of um, scenarios, um, a number of um, uh, development partners are with us, including Government of India. Dr. Reddy says other companies have come forward to help provide electronic devices to the year 12 and 13 students. Once uh, we take the full proposal to Cabinet, our Prime Minister will announce the details of it. The use of tablets by students will enhance the learning environment as a complementary tool. The Digital Literacy Project will also assist the Ministry by cost-cutting for printing textbooks. Rachel Na, FBC News. MNJ Lifestyle Therapy feels it has been misrepresented in recent reports from the Consumer Council of Fiji questioning its operation in Fiji. The company operating out of Lombasa has also refuted claims that the treatment it gives has somehow caused further harm to a few individuals. Almost two weeks ago, the Consumer Council of Fiji released this statement damning MNJ Lifestyle Therapy for giving out these medicinal products to clients in Lombasa after receiving complaints. MNJ is an uh, alternative lifestyle therapy operation. We deal in the natural approach in treating people who uh, suffer as a result of NCDs and also uh, muscular injury therapy. One complainant, Prabhawati, claims to have received an unknown liquid medication and treatment from MNJ Lifestyle Therapy, which caused a severe swelling to her arm. Owner Jim Caddy says he had referred Wati to the hospital as she was a diabetic patient as well as an amputee, but her relatives insisted on getting treated there. I was quite shocked because uh, we never had any incidents like that before. And uh, the fact that she went to report this to the Consumer Council without showing herself to us, that's most probably the, the disappointing part of it. MNJ Lifestyle is run by Jim Caddy, a chemical researcher and therapist from Australia and has been operating for about 10 months now. Caddy denies claims that he is giving out unsubstantiated medicinal products. Uh, the MNJ products are products that are available at any pharmacy. And the reason why it's available on any pharmacy because it complies with the general health supplement uh, product uh, licensing board and so therefore it is not a drug and I feel as alternative therapist I am allowed within the practice to use those kind of things. FBC News understands the Consumer Council has referred the complaints to the Fiji Medicinal Products Board to be investigated. Eleanor Turangibu FBC News. In world news, eastern Aleppo in Syria is facing total destruction by Christmas. That's the warning from the United Nations envoy to Syria. Still ahead in sports, 20 districts confirmed for primary school IDC. And Fijian ambassadors doing wonders at Fiji International. This and more coming up.
मैं जुगेन नंबिलो तालेव से एडियो फीजी टू चौबीस सेकेंड मेरे साथ साथ रहता है हम मंगेरी तावा के लले से हमारे दिल में और दिमाग में खाली रेडियो फीजी टू है और सभी भाइयों से आग्रह करते हैं कि रेडियो फीजी टू सुनना चाहिए मेरा नाम अभिनेश है मैं नंदी का रहने वाला हूँ मैं सभी समय रेडियो फीजी टू सुनता हूँ क्योंकि उसमें आईना प्रोग्रेम रहता है हाय मैं उमेश नशासन नाबुआ से मैं जब Welcome back. This is FBC Sports. Telecom Fiji Warriors has named a strong squad to face USA Select in the American Cup tomorrow morning. Former Fiji Sevens rep Alivereti Vetokani is named in the starting lineup with Thai Levo's Henry Seniloli. Nandrunga's Rupeni Nasinga will captain the side in its first outing in Uruguay. The Fiji Warriors takes on USA Select at 5.30 a.m. tomorrow. Fiji has won the historical test match against Tor Samoa 2018 at Apia Park this afternoon. Both teams were tied at one all at halftime. Despite Samoa jumping to an early 18-1 lead, Fiji made a strong comeback and Samoa just could not match Fiji's pace in the end. American Brent Snedeker holds a commanding three-shot lead after three days of the Fiji International Golf Tournament. The Ryder Cup winner carded a two under par 70 to finish 12 under par. Australia's Anthony Houston is in second place with a nine under par total on the leaderboard. Fijians Vijay Singh and Sam Lee are tied on 36th spot with scorers of one over par. Miss World Fiji Puja Priyanka is enjoying her experience at the 2016 Fiji International Golf Tournament. Priyanka will represent Fiji at the Miss World Pageant in Washington, D.C. in the United States. Rohit Dale caught up with her. It's her first Fiji International and she's enjoying every moment of it. It's been an absolute amazing time. Um, um, the boys are great and um, they've, they've been keeping me entertained, and for, yeah, which I've been so lucky. And um, yeah, just, just hanging out with people and meeting with guests and it, it's, it's wonderful. Going up against some elite athletes as ambassadors for Fiji, Priyanka says no one is going easy on her. Ons. Ons. <laughs> Yes, so they do pick on me quite a bit, which is unfortunate, but you know what? It's okay. I can take it. I can take it. They stole my shoes. Oh, it's just up to mischief all the time. It's just, it's, it's great. It's been fun. <laughs> NRL star Jared Haney is also enjoying his break in Fiji. Yeah, no, it's been great. You know, I come over for the golf tournament, you know, thanks to Fiji Airways, you know, fl flew me over for it. And um, it's good to see the guys as well. So I haven't seen them since the Olympics. So I think to come over here and um, obviously you know, celebrate with, with the guys and, um, you know, see them and, and, and the joy that they still got, you know what I mean? It was great. Other ambassadors at this year's tournament are seven stars Osea Kolenisau, Masivesi Dakowanga, Emusi Mulevoro, and Wallabies great George Grigan. The tournament comes to an end tomorrow. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. The Raki Raki football side is the first team to qualify in the semi final of the senior division after thumping Nandong 5 0 this afternoon. Raki Raki led 2 0 at half time and maintained the momentum in the second half, scoring two more goals. Nasino is the other team th through, beating Northland Thai level by 2 0. Southern champion Lamy was held 1 0 by Tavua, whilst Northern champ Boa also played a 1 0 draw against Vatakola. The last round of pool matches continues tomorrow. In the Premier Division semi finals tomorrow, Nandi takes on Lombasa at 3 p.m., while Ba plays Lautoka at 5 p.m. 20 districts will participate in the 2016 Vodafone Primary Schools Football Championship. Major sponsor Vodafone Fiji today handed over $25,000 to support the tournament and also the pool matches has been decided. Meli Tavanga reports. Established in 1975, this is the 41st anniversary of the Fiji Primary Schools IDC. Association President Ami Chan says 8 under 12 teams and 20 under 14 teams will compete in the championships. Uh, 8 under 12 teams, they have come from, uh, uh, qualified from the zonal player, which we have in four different zones. So the winner and runoff of each zone, they make up to this uh, IDC for the under 12 uh, playoff, while all under 14 teams from all the districts uh, will be here to play their uh, tournament. A first for the primary school soccer is the introduction of the girls' competition, which will feature Suva and Rao. 
uh, by Fiji Primary, but it was always uh, been asked by our sponsors and uh, Fiji Football. Why don't we include the girls? Just because uh, the ladies' soccer is now also coming up equal to the men's. So we thought of uh, starting it from the bottom. So rather than getting the teams from all the districts. PGFA Vice President Taranes Reddy says developing sports at the grassroots level is vital. I've just spoken to the president of Fiji Primary Schools. There are a few areas we are lacking. Well, nobody's perfect. So we just need to work hand in hand uh, to improve those areas where we are lacking. So we are winner at the end of the day. This tournament will be played from the 19th to the 21st of this month at Ratudakombo Park in Nosori. Meli Tabanga, FBC Sports. Latoka Primary secured its first win, beating Lombasa 2-1 in the court's inter-district championship this morning. In the other match, Rare were held Raki Raki 1 all at Bidesi Park. Raki Raki leads in the primary division with four points, followed by Lombasa and Latoka on three points, while Rewa is all bundled, having only a point from two matches. The last round of games will be held tomorrow. And there was a huge turnout at the annual volleyball carnival in Nandi today. The tournament has been growing in numbers each year and teams from as far as Suva took time out to enjoy the beautiful weather. Rohit Deo was in Nandi and files this report. Teams took full advantage of the Nandi weather, resulting in some great matches. We just humbled at the uh, level of confidence that we see that organizations and uh, players have in this uh, tournament and that's uh, created the increase in numbers. Also present was the Fiji Sports Council team led by none other than Liziana Lombuka. It's been great, thanks Rohit. The AFL team, the executive committee, they've been fantastic. They've been looking after all the different teams and the Fiji Sports Council team has been made to feel very special because this is the very first time we've come to join this competition. Tournament organizer Joe Gray says Lombuka's presence has added value to this year's event. Mrs. Luambuka and her team, this is their first time for participation. We are so, so grateful. They add value to our um, organization and to our sporting fraternity. And also, we are honored that they believe in our cause. Organizers are now looking at how to make next year's event bigger and better. Rohit Deo, FPC Sports. Weather today, fine apart from afternoon showers and thunderstorms were experienced over most places today. Meanwhile, a heavy rain alert remains in force for the Fiji group. A southeasterly wind flow prevails over Fiji. A trough of low pressure with cloud and rain lies slow moving just to the north of Fiji and is expected to move over the group later on Sunday. Looking at the temperatures, they were fairly con constant across the group. Bayan Lombasa hit a high of 33 degrees this afternoon. Tomorrow's forecast is for cloudy conditions and showers developing into thunderstorms in the afternoon. Afternoon. And our further route look, it's occasional showers, heavy at times and few thunderstorms. Southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. Recapping the main stories for tonight, Fiji Day celebrated around Fiji, marking 46 years of independence. NGO says women of all ages are vulnerable to sexual violence. And Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority says traders are still withholding VAT payments. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. On to this week's poll question, we are asking, should corporal punishment be reintroduced for violent criminals? To visit, visit our FPC website to answer. You've been watching FBC News. Have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Good night. Yandra, I love listening to Gold FM at Golden Point Resort. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hola, my name is General from the Village. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Moses from Valley. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Marida Manako, I'm from Kandavu. I like listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Silipa from Tavo Town. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM.
Only the classic hits.